and welcome back. In this video, we will start with most basic functionality of Power Query and cover topics like transpose, use first row as header, merge columns, remove columns, and select columns. Let me pull up the sample Excel file which we will be loading in our Power Query. We have a scenario where the first two rows of our data are extra rows. We don't really need them. As you can see here, there's some extra information here it says x1, x2, x3, and then there's a blank row here. So we need to get rid of those two rows and use the next two rows as our column headers and keep in mind that we need to combine these two rows into one row and use them as column header the new column names will be like this so if i replicate in excel do concat first column name will be this second will be this one and so on so forth so let me remove this let me close up this file and let's load up this file in power query Okay, so we will start with the same file we were using before. So I have the file open. All right, so let me load up the Excel file in Power Query. So we say from file from Excel workbook, and I'm going to select the file I need to load in. All right, so we can see the file name here, stocks underscore data, and the sheet name here. And as you can see, it does not have any blue bar on top of it. So it says this is not a table, this is a worksheet. That's before. We don't want to load this data directly. I would recommend that you always use transform data and then load it after the necessary transformations. So as you can see here, I have disabled the settings where it automatically assigns the column types. It's not a good practice. You can change the settings from file, query options, and then in data load, you would say in type detection, never detect column types and headers for unstructured sources. Click on OK. So the first option in transform tab is group by. We'll skip this for now and we'll come back to it at a later time. Next option is use first row as headers. This tab has two options. We have the option to either use first row as headers or use headers as first row, which is really helpful. So let's click on use first row as headers and we see that it has now promoted first row as headers. So let's click on this, use first row as headers. And we see now it has promoted the top row as headers we can see the m code for it as well promote headers so as explained before the top two rows are not helpful to us so we are going to remove this step and what we will do is we will get rid of the top two rows so for that i am going to go in home tab and click on remove rows and remove top rows so within remove top rows it says specify how many rows to remove from the top we need to remove the top two rows so we'll say two here click on ok and we see that it has removed the top two rows. We can see the M code for it as well. Table dot skip. It has given the table name and then two as number of rows. Now what we want to do is uh, we need to come up with a way where we can merge these two first rows and then use them as a header. An easy way to do that is to use transpose. So let's go to transform tab, click on transpose. And what this will do is this will transpose all of our data into a wide format set of narrow format now we see that uh, our two first two rows have been converted to first two columns so what we need to do now is to merge these two columns so let's select these two columns selection continuous selection can be done by using shift and then you just select the column and if it's a non-contiguous columns then you will have to press and hold control and then i click on the left mouse button and we can select it that way so let's select these two columns and then in transform tab we click on merge columns in separator we can give a separator if our separator is not appearing in this list we can use a custom one so let's use custom and dash for now and we can keep the name as merged keep that in mind that the transform tab makes the changes in place and it places the existing columns so you see it has not created a new column but it has combined the first two columns and made it into a new column and the original columns have not been retained if we need to use them again they are not available to us now that our merged column is created now let's transpose it again to bring to original state but this time the two columns have been merged into one column and this will be converted into a top row so let's click on transpose again and we see that our top two rows have been merged into one row and now we click on use first row as headers and we see that now we have our desired headers in as a first row now we have our desired headers like we wanted to now from home tab let's look at choose column options so the first option here is choose columns 
we go here we select choose columns right so you can select a list of columns that you need or let's say if you want to skip a few columns you can just deselect them so for example we are going to deselect these two columns we click on ok and as you can see here the formula bar has all of these columns as hard coded which we selected now this does work fine but since it's hard coding all the columns if your source data updates and you remove one of the columns your query will break and you don't want that so let's test that by closing this query so i'm going to say close and load to only create a connection i don't want to load this into a table because we are still working on it and it's not in a final format yet so we click on ok and we go to our original file and let's remove and let's remove this specific column let's say we remove column g which is adjusted close we click on delete we click on save and we click on close now let's go back to the power query we can either go from get data launch power query editor or within queries and connections we can double click on this and it will open power query ed editor as well let's click refresh on our power query right so we click on refresh and we can see that it says expression dot error the column day dash close of the table was not found now the problem is we have removed this specific column from our original source file and now this is saying that this column is not being found and if we go above this step it will continue to load data so it's telling us that our specific error is coming from this step now better alternative is to use remove columns so we said remove columns and it has removed that specific column so if we look at the m code that has been created it says table dot remove columns and it's only mentioning the column that has been removed now the idea is that it's only related to the column which we are working on it's not affecting any other column unlike the previous step where we are choosing columns and it's hard coding all of the columns and if any of our source column is missing, your query will break. That's it for this video on basic Power Query transformations. We will continue with exploring more available transformations in future videos. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.